Hello everyone. Now we move on to look at second part of chapter 2, Essential Elements of a Valid Contract. And now we look at essential elements of a valid contract under Vietnamese law. In the previous part, we already looked at essential elements of a valid contract under U.S. law. And you already know that there are four essential elements of valid contract under U.S. law. To remind, they are agreement, consideration, contractual capacity, and legality. So it can be seen from this slide, under Vietnamese law, there are three elements of a valid contract. So in comparison with those under U.S. law, the elements of a valid contract under Vietnamese law include agreement, contractual capacity, legal objects, and morality. So, we can see that under Vietnamese law, consideration is not required as an essential element of a valid contract. Similar to U.S. law, under Vietnamese law, agreement means the meeting of the minds of the parties involved. And differ from U.S. law, where agreement is usually used as one of the essential elements of a valid contract, under Vietnamese law, we refer to agreement and contract interchangeably. We use the term agreement and contract interchangeably. In this part, we will look at four specific issues. First of all, we look at the definitions of offer, the condition for the offer to be valid, what are the rules governing offer. The second issue, we will look at acceptance. What does acceptance mean? What are the rules governing acceptance? So in other words, when acceptance takes effect, we look at counter offers as well. Thirdly, we will look at the point in time when the contract is formed or when the agreement is read. And fourthly, we will look at the effective date of a contract. When the contract takes effect, what are the rules govern the effective date of a contract? Now, I wanted to talk about the definitions of the offer, the effective date of the offer, how the offer can be amended or withdrawn, and we look at the revocation or cancellation of the offer under Vietnamese civil code. First of all, how offer is defined under Vietnamese law. Under Article 386 of the Civil Code 2015, offer means a clear expression by the offerer of its intention to enter into a contract and to be bound by such an offer, which is made to a certain or specific person or to the public, which we call the offeree. This far from U.S. law, Vietnamese law doesn't have a clear provision to distinguish between invitation to treat and offer. However, if we compare with the requirements of a valid offer under U.S. law and the rules governing or defy the offers under Vietnamese law, you can see that there are similarities. Under U.S. law, as you can remember, there are three requirements for a valid contract, sorry, for the valid offer under U.S. law. They are intention to be legally bound, in other words, objective theories. The second one, the term and conditions are clear and definite. And the third one is that the offer is communicated to the offeree. If you look at the definitions of offer under Article 386.1 of Vietnam Civil Code, you can see all of the three elements. The first one, you can see in the definition that the offer means a clear expression. So a clear expression can explicitly, not really explicitly, but impliedly means that there must be clear terms, clear and definite terms. 
And then the second part is that by the offer of its intention to enter into the contract, so there must be an intention to enter into the contract similar to the first requirements of uh, object under objective theories under U.S. law. And the last one, under Vietnamese law, the definitions of offer also requires that the offer must be made to another certain or specific person or to the public. So it means that offer needs to be communicated. So it seems that all of the three elements required for the valid offer under U.S. law are also available under Vietnamese law. Sub-Article 2 of Article 388 of the Civil Code 2015 set up the rules in order to determine the effective date of the offer. So there are three situations that you can take into account when you are about to determine the effective dates of the offer. The first one is at the time the offer is delivered to the place of president of the offeree, if the offeree is an individual, or the offer is delivered to the head office of the offeree, if the offeree is a legal entity. Second, the, when the offer is placed into the official information system of the offeree, and the third situation is when the offeree knows about the offer to enter into a contract by ways of other means. So there are three ways for you to determine when the offer takes effect. The next things we are going to discuss is whether the offer already been made can be amended or withdrawn. Article 386 of Vietnam Civil Code provides that the offeror may modify or withdraw an offer in the following cases. In fact, there are two cases. The first case is that the offeree received the notice of modification or withdrawal of the offer prior to or at the same time at receive of the offer. So do you think that it's easy to modify or withdraw the offer? Okay. It may not be simple because usually when you send the offer and then you send the modification or withdrawal, if you send both the offer and the notice of modification or the notice of withdrawal in different times, which means that what is sent first will be received first. You can only, so if so, you can only modify or withdraw the offer if you send a notice of modification or withdrawal to the offeree by the other means of communication would be faster than the means of communication that you use to send the offer. The second way by which the offerer can modify or withdraw an offer is that the offerer clearly specify or states the circumstances in which the offer could be modified or withdrawn in the offer, and such circumstances had in fact arisen. And if so, the offerer, the offer is deemed to be modified or withdrawn. And the effects of the modification or the modification of the offer is that it's become a new offer. So the modifications of the offer will become a new offer. And if the modification become a new offer, the original offer is no longer valid. Article 390 of the Vietnam Civil Code also provides for the situation in which the offer can be revoked or rescinded. So we look at the situation in which the offer can be revoked. An offerer may rescind or revoke the offer if such rights were specified in the offer and the offeree received the notice of rescission or revocation of the offer prior to the offeree providing a notice of acceptance 
of the offer. So you can see here there are two conditions for the offerer to revoke the offer. The first condition is that the rights of revocation must be stated or specified in the offer. And secondly, the offeree received the notice of revocation prior to sending an acceptance. Prior to his sending an acceptance. So there are two conditions together. So do you think that it is easy to revoke or cancel or rescind the offer already been sent? Not easy. If you want to have an opportunity or have a chance to revoke the offer, you have to stake your rights of revocation in the offer. And after that, you want to revoke it. And then you send the notice of revocation to the offeree, but the, not, the notice of revocation only take effect if it is received by the offeree before he send back the acceptance to the offerer. So you can see here the differences between US law and Vietnamese laws with respect to revocations of the offers is that under US law, we do not have a concept of amendment or withdrawal of the offer. They, they use revocation as the only way that you can revoke your offer. And under US law, offer can be revoked anytime before acceptance. But under Vietnamese law, you can see that it is more difficult for you to revoke the offer or amend or withdraw the offer. So you should bear, the, bear this in mind when you wrap the offer under Vietnamese law. Now we look at acceptance. What acceptance is defined under Vietnamese law and when acceptance takes effect and can the offeree, after accept the offer, can withdraw his or her acceptance? Acceptance is defined under Vietnamese law to mean a reply by the offeree accepting the entire contents of the offer. So even though the word things may be different, but the definition of acceptance under Vietnamese law very much similar to acceptance under U.S. law because acceptance under Vietnamese law also requires to be unconditional, which means that when you accept the offer, you have to accept the entire contents of the offer. It means that acceptance must be unconditional. If you change any terms and condition of the offer, even though you say, okay, I agree, but blah, blah, blah. And in that situation, you did not make an acceptance. But otherwise, you make a counter offer. And similar to US law, the silence of the offeree shall not be deemed to be an acceptance of the offer, unless otherwise agreed or unless it complies with the custom as established by the parties. Or in other words, it complies with the prior dealing between the parties. Under Vietnamese law, there are some sort of strict rules with respect to the time limits for acceptance of the offer. So Article 394 of the Civil Code provides for the time limits for the acceptance. First, when the offeror has specified a time limit for a reply, a reply accepting shall only be effective if it is made within that time limit. If the offeror receives an acceptance after the time limit has expired, such acceptance shall be deemed to be a new offer from the original offeree. So, in that case, the original offeree now becomes the new offerer who is making a new offer. 
what if the offeror do not specify a time limit for reply? In that situation, a reply accepting shall only be effective if it is made within a reasonable time limit. You can see here under Vietnamese law, which is news under the Civil Code 2015, is yield the concept of reasonableness. Okay, so it's very much similar to the concept of reasonableness under U.S. law. So the court will take into account the circumstances of a particular case in order to determine whether that is within a reasonable time limit or not. For instance, if the offerer is about to make an offer to sell mooncake, and you know that mooncake can only be sold in a particular period of time within a year. And if the offerer who makes an offer to sell mooncake, the offeree need to accept that offer within relatively reasonable periods of time in order to ensure that the offerer can sell the mooncake before the mid-autumn festival. The second rule with respect to time limits for acceptance of the offer is that if a notice of acceptance of an offer to enter into the contract arrives late for objective reason, with the offerer known or should known, such notice shall still be effective unless the offerer immediately replies that it does not agree with such acceptance would will make late by the offeree. So what are the objective reasons? Objective reasons are those reasons which are out of control of the offerees. What if the, the situation when the party communicate directly, for example, the conversation by telephone or by other means of intense communication the offeree must reply immediately as to whether or not it will accept, save the case where the parties had agreed on the time limit for reply. So if the parties do not state the time limit for replies in the offer, specifically the offerer, and therefore if the offer were communicated by instantaneous method of communication, which means the communications with is fast. And the law requires that the offeree need to reply immediately.